Bill shows us DeWalt 2.0. Festival knocks Makita off a throne. And if you miss Milwaukee's Pipeline event, we've got you covered. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. This episode is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool. Pro tools, pro service, all of the best prices at ohiopowertool.com. And Ego, power beyond belief. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. It's August 21st, 2020, and today we have some Power Tool news and all of the tool videos you won't want to miss. Let's get to it. Of course, the biggest news this week is Milwaukee's pipeline, which happened yesterday. And today we're back to our normal boring lives. But that shouldn't get you down because now there's a metric crap ton of Milwaukee videos right here on Belts and Boxes. If you're a Milwaukee fan or a DeWalt fan who hasn't left a thoughtless insult on YouTube in 20 minutes, I'll put a link in the description to our Milwaukee Pipeline playlist where you can find every new tool they announced. Don't forget that in just a couple weeks, part two will come out, which is pack out focused, and we'll finally find out if we get our drawers we've been asking for. Stay tuned. DeWalt's Tough System 2.0 mobile storage system is finally finding its way onto the job site, and Bill brought a set to the Sparky channel to give us his take. We got a chance to see this kid up close back in November of last year, so we're not surprised that Bill loves this stuff. He takes his time looking at the rolling toolbox, the large toolbox, and the regular toolbox. He demonstrates their features and seems particularly happy about its backward compatibility with Tough System 1.0. In conclusion, I really like DeWalt Tough System 2.0. See? If you're ready to upgrade your DeWalt storage, head over to Sparky Channel on YouTube. This next video kind of surprised us. Our buddy Austin shared a review of the Festool TSC 55 track saw, naming it the best track saw of 2020, which essentially made the recent Toolbox Buzz video completely obsolete. That's not how that works. Austin is a talented carpenter who we featured on our show many times before. We put a lot of weight into his recommendations, and here he convincingly suggests that Festool is still the king of track saws for all the high-quality, feature-rich, wallet-burning Festool reasons you'd expect. But even he takes a swipe at the Toolbox Buzz crew. In my opinion, this is the best cordless track saw on the market. Um, a lot of people might tell you they like the Makita better, Somebody better call John Hopkins and tell them to prepare the burn unit. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I mean, you know, because Austin was all like, some people, and Robillard was all like, Makita this and that, and then Austin was all like, no, -uh. <laughs> right? How bored are you? Yeah, I'm pretty bored. For the full review, head over to Tools at Work on YouTube. And finally, several tool channels got the new Ego two-stage snowblower this last week, us included, but only Andrew from the Kite Army thought to use it with sawdust. That's freaking genius! Andrew has a thing for Ego, so while the rest of us unboxed the two-stage snowblower and, you know, looked at it, <laughs> Andrew was already filling his backyard with sawdust. This gave us the first look at Ego's claimed 35-foot throwing distance, and look at that thing go! Is this a perfect test of a snowblower? No, but it'll do for now. But we're still waiting to see this thing take on the mountains of snow it was made for. You can see the full review at Kite Army on YouTube. It's time again for some actual work with Rob Robillard. Hey, Rob, Sarah. Today I want to talk to you guys about concrete footings and structural piers, point load. A lot of times when we build decks and things, we, do, we dig footings. This is called an easy pier, and it's a precast concrete footing. And, you know, for years we would hand dig our own uh, footings and, and we would put in sauna tubes and with the mixed concrete and pour it and put in a J-bolt. Well, this is precast. It's done somewhere in a factory or, you know, a place and they ship it to us. They're about 80 or $90 a piece. When you have a lot of footings to do and you have a machine on site, this makes more sense than actually digging the hole, putting in the footings and pouring the concrete. I hope this helps. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Rob. It's time again for our construction industry news, courtesy of the Construction Junkie. OSHA's Safe and Sound Week just wrapped up, and if you missed it, well, you're no longer safe, or sound for that matter. But don't worry, there are two more safety awareness weeks you can get your company involved in, starting with September 14th through the 18th, with OSHA's 7th Annual National Safety Stand Down to Prevent Falls event. OSHA, in partnership with other industry safety organizations, including NOISH and COPWAR. Those are acronyms, Rob. 
You say the letters. Oh. Not, they're not words. Right, right, right. Okay. The NIOSH and CPWR have put together a solid list of resources that your company can use to highlight the hazards and best practices of fall hazard and prevention in construction. Suggested activities include holding toolbox talks, performing PPE inspections, and developing rescue plans. That same week is Construction Safety Week, which is presented by a group made up of trade organizations, industry partners, advocates, and members with the goal of recognizing and celebrating those who practice and enforce safety on the job site in order to ensure everybody goes home safe to their families. Each day of that event focuses on a different safety topic, with September 18th being my favorite, which is, quote, thank you, construction workers. It's like they're saying what we're all thinking. For more on these stories and the rest of your construction industry news, be sure to head over to constructionjunkie.com. Swinging over to Instagram, the Melbourne Chippy Chick. Melbourne. Chi Melbourne Chippy Chick. That's not how she says it. Anyways, she started the work week off with a few of her favorite DeWalt tools and found a way to work in the sun. Great plan, Steph. Kiefer the Tullaholic asked if you could see his hidden access panel, and I totally did. You did not see it. Prove I didn't. Can't, I can you? Can't. Yeah, exactly. And finally, our friends at Wooden Laser broke out their 30 foot steel chainsaw to cut through that teeny tiny log. That thing is not 30 feet. It looks like 30 feet to me. Whatever. All right, that's it for us this week. I want to thank Ego and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. We couldn't do it without you guys. Be sure to join us tomorrow for Make or Break. And of course, you can catch Sarah's top five DIY in the middle of the week. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you next week.